Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining me here for this live streamed yin yoga class. Whether you're joining us live or watching this as a recording later, welcome. Thank you for coming. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Rebecca, I'm a yoga instructor and meditation teacher here in Edmonton, primarily teaching at Yoga Within. Which, by the way, if you've been following us on this journey over the past couple of weeks and you've been enjoying our videos, please like and subscribe to our channel and even consider um, a small donation at yogawithin.ca on our website to help us keep our brick and mortar store open during this time. We really appreciate your love, support, and all of the messages. So if you've never practiced yin before, we're going to be practicing long passive holds in um, really relaxing postures that are meant to find space in the connective tissue and give a little bit of love and care to the joints in the body. Um, yin yoga is not meant for someone who has an injury in the body or for pregnancy, so please consider a different practice today if you fit into either of those categories. We will be using some props if you have them at home. Um, if you don't, be creative. I am just using a folded up blanket, a small blanket, which will help support um, the back of the head or support different parts of the body as we move into different postures. So that's really important. And then if you happen to have a bolster, great, pull it out. And if you don't, a larger blanket or a pillow, um, fold it up. Um, to replace the bolster is perfect. Great. Also, we will be doing some postures on our knees as well. Not every posture feels good for everybody. So if we are doing something that doesn't feel right for you, please practice ahimsa or nonviolence. Um, and I'm going to try and give as many modifications as I can so that you can enjoy the practice. But if what I'm offering doesn't work for you, please consider changing the posture so that it does work for your body or doing something that you know um, is supportive for you in that time. Okay. I invite you to participate to whatever degree works for you. So um, you're at home watching this on a video. If you decide to change it up and um, just try something different, feel free. If you're feeling tired today, um, just not feeling into it, you can even just close your eyes and visualize the practice. And uh, research does show that this actually does have benefit in our nervous system. And uh, so yeah, participate to whatever degree works best for you. Okay, let's begin. Uh, we'll start with centering. And so you can lie down or you can stay sitting up. The most important thing is that you're comfortable, that you can totally let go in the body and relax, that you can feel a nice long spine, nice natural curve of the low back, nice natural curve of the neck, and that you can breathe freely. Okay, so whatever that looks like for you. Feel free if you're lying down to support your head or place the bolster underneath your knees or a blanket or a pillow. So just settle in and we'll begin to just start to reconnect with a conscious breath. So we breathe all day long unconsciously, but there's something really powerful that happens when we start to shift the awareness into more of a conscious, mindful breath. So we'll start by just noticing, noticing the quality of the breath today. I'm noticing without judging. So just watching as if you were just standing back and watching the breath play out in front of you. If the eyes are still open, you can gently lower your gaze or you can close the eyes if you like. The most important thing is that you're able to just begin to turn inward. So easy to get pulled away with thoughts and other challenges that are happening around us. When we can come back to our center and use the breath to help us draw back inside, 
Something special happens. Our perspectives can begin to shift. You can start to experience a new sense of peace. Continue to watch the breath. Just notice is the inhale longer or shorter than the exhale? Do you move right from the inhale to the exhale or can you find a light pause in between each breath in and each breath out? Can you maybe begin to extend each inhale and each exhale? And if it helps, adding a count. So perhaps your inhale is four, five, or six seconds long. See if you can mirror the exhale to the same length. If your inhale is five seconds long, see if you can count five seconds long for the breath out. Pausing still in between each breath in and each breath out. Don't extend the breath further than feels natural for you. So we don't want any straining Effortless breath. Each breath in brings you new energy and each breath out settles you more and more into your body and mind and heart in this moment. You can add one more piece to this breath if you like. We find a gentle constriction in the back of the throat, close the lips and begin to breathe only through the nose. And then we breathe in a way where the throat is slightly constricted so that we hear and feel the breath moving in and the belly and patting the head at the same time. But see if you can still keep equal mirrored length in between each breath in and each breath out. See if you can still find a pause between each inhale and each exhale. And at the same time, throughout, using this ocean breath, we call it in yin. Similar to the, the same thing as the ujjayi breath in hatha. And then begin to let the mirroring of the breath leave. And just let the inhale still be long, let the exhale still be long. And I'm going to invite you to continue to try and use this ocean breath, that audible breath throughout your whole practice. eyes are still closed, you can gently begin to bat them open. 
You can start to find a little bit of movement in the body, fingers and toes, whether you're sitting or lying down. Maybe you start to find some rotation in the ankles and the wrists. And if you're lying down, we're gonna all come up to sitting at this time. So find your way onto one side and then bring yourself up to a seated posture, do some spinal rocks to come up to sitting. If you've been sitting for a while and your legs are feeling stiff, feel free to stretch them out and cross them maybe the other way. An alternative is to also come and sit on the lower legs in hero's position too. So this is a nice alternative posture. Great. We're gonna take a moment just to do a caring breath. Today we're really gonna focus on finding space in the upper body. I know a lot of people feel tight in the heart right now, tight in the upper back body, the shoulders, the neck. So we are gonna be experiencing opening in the entire body but really focusing on the upper body today. So we're gonna just start letting space find its way into the upper body by uh, using the caring breath. And so the caring breath looks like this. You might just wanna watch me one time and then you can join in with your own breath. So hands just rest on the thighs. The spine is nice and tall and the chin drops down toward the chest. We inhale to lift the gaze and lift one hand. And then we breathe out to bring the hand over to the opposite shoulder and exhale back down. I always joke I feel a little bit like the Hello Kitty dolls, the little bobbleheads doing this, but it feels really good opening the neck, the shoulders. And it's also an opportunity to practice a little bit of vinyasa with our breath. So where we pair the breath with movement. So feel free to join in if you're not already. Okay. So the gaze goes one way and the hand goes the other. The breath out is down. And then you switch sides, inhaling, coming up. Exhaling, hand to one shoulder, gaze to the other. Inhaling back to center. Yoga is meant to really just slow down the mind. So slowing down the mind with breath and movement at the same time is a really nice way to start. See if you can even slow the movement down just a little bit more. We're continuing to use that ocean breath if it feels good for your body for your lungs, for your heart. We'll do one more on each side. Starting to really feel the shoulders and the neck begin to open. And then draw the shoulders right up into the ears and exhale back down. Up into the ears and exhale back down. And begin to make this movement a bit bigger. If you have any shoulder um, trouble at all, really slow it down, really tune into where your body can move today. Your practice is your responsibility. You need to know what your limits are. Changing your legs if you need to, otherwise staying in a seated posture. We're gonna take some cat cows to further begin to open before we take our longer held postures. Today, I would love to see us move in our cat cow from the heart. So often we move from the tailbone first, just really wanna focus on moving the heart today. So as we breathe in, let's begin to draw the heart forward and draw the shoulders back. 
And as we breathe out, we'll press the heart back toward the wall behind you. Draw the shoulders forward, walk the hands forward and drop the chin. So you are still moving in that pelvic area, but the movement is first, just for today, coming from the heart first. Keep the elbows tucked close into the body as you draw the heart forward. And as you breathe out, just slide the hands down the legs, away from the body, drawing the shoulders forward, heart back. The inhale is the movement forward. Still using that ocean breath if you love it and if you don't, breathing in whatever way is best for you. I'll say whatever way is best for you probably a hundred times in each class because it really is true. Yoga is about your practice. You having a curiosity about your body and about your state of mind and then finding what works for your body in this moment. Good. Take one more inhale and one more exhale back. And this time, interlace the fingers, press away from the body. And as you straighten the spine, begin to press the hands away from you. Good. Only going to bring the shoulders all the way up. Okay, inhale, press the hands up. Exhale, drop the shoulders down and away from the ears. Hold on to the right wrist with the left hand, and we're just gonna take a gentle side bend. So beginning to Find space in that side body. Just taking a few breaths here. And then back to center and then switch sides. So holding on to the left wrist with the right hand and just finding a little bit of encouragement for that side body to open, not collapsing in that side body. Still lifting up and out. One more breath. Coming back up, exhaling all the way back down. Keep the fingers walking away from the body. Nice tall spine. Keep the fingers spread. And walk the fingers out till you can really actually feel it in the arms. Okay, we're starting to open the connective tissue in the arms. Find your breath. Lift up through the spine. And as you exhale, bring your lips over toward your left shoulder. Okay, so drawing the chin over and then beginning to tilt down. Are you still working with that ocean breath? Take three more full inhales and exhales here. Make sure those shoulders are still drawing down and away from the ears. Good. Drawing the gaze back to center and we'll move right on over to the other side. If you feel numbness or tingling in the arms at all, just relax how stretched out the arms are. Just come back toward the body just a little bit. And on an exhale, turn the gaze over toward that right shoulder and then begin to draw the lips down toward the shoulder. A little theme of self-love in class today, first the carrying breath and then we call these shoulder kisses. Consider the ways how you can love yourself a little bit more in this moment. Let's take one more full breath here. And 
slowly bring the gaze back to center. Open up the arms nice and wide. Spread the fingers. Take a deep inhale. And on an exhale, wrap the arms around the body and give yourself a big hug. I don't know if you can hear my cracks in my bones from there. I'm one of those creaky people. If you feel or hear those cracks and creaks in your body, it's okay, it's normal. Exhale, cross the opposite arm over. Drop the gaze down. And just release. We're gonna come down to child's pose. Okay. So if being on your knees isn't something that works for your body, you can come down onto your back against a wall. Okay, I'm gonna demo the wall first because most of you, if you know child's pose, you can come right into it now. But if being on the knees doesn't work for you, please come down on your side, bring your legs up toward the wall, bring the feet together and knees apart. Okay, so this is your modification. Otherwise, find your way into your child's pose. And you can lay on a bolster or you can just stretch the arms out nice and far. Okay, so we're going to spend about two minutes in our child's pose here with the chin tucked and the forehead on the floor. You can also bring the gaze over to one side or the other. But if you're doing that, make sure that you spend equal amount of time on each side. I'll let you know when halfway is up. So knees are nice and wide, toes are together. If the ankles are bothering you, feel free to place a folded up blanket underneath the ankles. Really walk those hands away from you, finding an opening in the shoulders. And if this is too much on the arms, Feel free just to grab opposite elbows. The arms don't have to be outstretched. And then connect back with that ocean breath if that's been working for you. We're about halfway through this child's pose. So if you have your head, your one ear down on the mat, just pick up the ear and draw it over the other, to the other side. If your forehead is on the mat, then just continue to breathe deeply. This posture helps to find length in the spine. If the arms are outstretched, we're opening the connected tissue in the arms, helping find space even through the low back and hips. The hip joints and knees are gently stressed in this posture so that we begin to give them a little bit of extra nourishment. And if you can continue to stay in the wide leg child's pose, continue to keep the legs as they are. If you need to bring the knees together for a modified child's pose, um, feel free to do that. But we're going to walk the hands now over toward the left for a nice side body stretch. Okay, we're only going to be on each side for about a minute. Lower the forehead back down to the floor if you like, or place one ear on the mat, whichever is most comfortable for you. Again, and really inviting that ocean breath or any deep breath that you're using into that low back. 
Seeing if you can feel that low back expand and contract with each inhale and each exhale. Good, and then we're gonna walk the hands back to center and walk them over the other way. Finding a nice opening in the other side body. Again, forehead can come down toward the mat or one ear to the mat or the other. And again, feel or imagine the breath moving down into that low back body. I did forget to mention if you were on your back, hopefully you just found a nice side bend on your back. And if you didn't, you can go ahead and take those now as we begin to bring ourselves back up. Bring the legs together if they're still apart. Just take a moment to come into a tabletop and stretch one leg back and then the other. Good, and then we're gonna make our way onto our seat. So if you are on your back, you're just going to come up to sitting. Find your way onto your seat in whatever way is best for you. And we're gonna widen our legs now. Okay, and if you're here and you already feel like you're falling backwards, take your small folded up blanket and just put it underneath the seat to just tilt your pelvis forward slightly. Perfect. We're going to draw the right foot in toward the left thigh. Good. The first posture we're going to take is a dragonfly. So inhaling, lifting up through the spine and finding a gentle twist on the exhale. You can use your hands on the ground beside you to just help encourage the body to twist a little more. So we're twisting really from that low belly first. Inhaling to find length. Exhaling to twist over that extended leg. And you might have to adjust your seat now. We want equal weight between each sit bone. And although we are focusing on that extended leg, we also want weight on this bent leg as well. So focus on pressing down through that bent leg, breathing in. And as you breathe out, we're going to begin to fold over that extended leg. And now you can stay here without any props. If you feel like you need a little bit of support to bring the floor up to you, you can place your bolster right on your leg and fold over that, drawing the forehead down toward the bolster. Or you can even rest the head in the hands here. And using props doesn't make your practice easier, it just makes your practice better for you today. So please know that it's not about needing props or not needing props. Just ask yourself sincerely what you need today. And we're just here for two more minutes. So sink into that forward fold. Make sure that that right knee isn't lifting up. You're still bringing weight into that bent leg. Reconnecting with that ocean breath if you've lost it. The mind will try and take you to all kinds of places. And it's fine. It's fine, but you don't need to go with it. You can come back to the breath. 
just acknowledge that the mind was trying to be somewhere else and then bring it back. And it might happen a hundred more times, but that's the practice. The practice is the awareness and the reconnecting with the breath. Slowly begin to roll up. This was both a twist and a forward fold, so the low back might be talking to you, be kind to it. Place your prop off to the side if you're using it. We're gonna take that right leg and begin to draw that knee up. And then again, we're gonna to have to readjust the side or the sit bones perhaps. The leg can stay, or the foot can stay on the inside of the leg, or you can hop that foot over toward the outside of the leg. If you do that, you probably have to adjust the sit bones a little bit more. We're going to take a little bit of a long hold twist, okay? So if you have stuff going on in the shoulders, you can just take the arm, the left arm, and wrap it around that right leg. If the shoulders are okay and happy, we're gonna reach up through that left arm, and draw it over that right leg. The right arm comes behind you in a spider-like shape or a tent, just so that you don't collapse right into the hand. Inhaling to find length, starting at center, exhaling to draw the belly back toward the spine and finding a twist in the low, back and in the belly and then breathing in again for a nice tall spine and exhaling we begin to twist a little bit more from the thoracic or middle of the back and then inhaling once more and if the shoulders want to open a little bit more toward the wall behind you continue to draw that right shoulder back and then maybe the head also follows That straight leg is active. Okay, now we're gonna make this a little bit juicier. Hold the position of the core, so the spine all the way from the low belly up toward the shoulders. And then keeping your nose parallel to the floor, begin to draw the nose back toward center and then back over toward that extended leg. So we're holding the shape of the twist in the body, but noses and gaze are now over that extended leg. And if it feels good, you can begin to drop down through that chin. Really nice juicy opening in the neck and shoulders. Find your breath. So we're in a yin practice. We are going to hold this for a little bit longer, about another minute. But remember honoring yourself. And if you need to come out at any time, that's what you need to do. Be kind to yourself. If you start to feel tingling in that back arm, just back off a little bit. Draw that back arm a little bit more toward the side. But continue to keep the body twisted. A few more, but three more deep, full breaths. Checking in to see if you have your inner smile happening.
And then after your third breath, gently bringing the whole body back over that extended leg, taking a breath there, moving nice and slow. And gently walking that foot back out to the side. And then stretching that right leg out as well. So now you're in a nice wide leg position. And maybe wide leg is here for you. And that's totally fine. Maybe it's here. Maybe it's here. Maybe you can open up further than I can. Just be curious about your own body. Readjust your sit bones. So lift up and grab the fleshy bits. Pull them away. Find space. Again, you can have your bolster or your big pillow or your rolled up blanket here in front of you. Okay, so we're gonna begin to take a forward fold over the bolster or your prop, or you might not need a prop at all and you would just like to fold forward onto the ground. Inhale, find length in the spine and exhale, begin to walk those arms forward. And we can round in the back here, it's perfectly fine. I really like to have the support of the bolster. If you don't want to fold too much further over, you can just rest your hands or your head in your hand. You can also reach for the end of your bolster, dropping your chin down toward the chest, and this helps you find a little bit more opening in that thoracic spine and the neck. Okay, or maybe you're not using the bolster at all and you're just coming right down onto the floor. Wherever you are, enjoy. We're going to be here for two minutes. You can close your eyes, bring your attention back to that ocean breath. And then notice what's happening with the legs. If the legs want to be soft, let the legs be soft. If you would like to engage the connective tissue in the legs a little bit more, then we're going to press out through the heels of the feet, drawing the toes toward you. This will definitely intensify it, so you decide where you want to be. Remembering to check in with the breath. Can you still find the pauses in between each inhale and each exhale? Maybe yes, maybe no. In this last minute here, deepen the posture if, if the body is open to it. So maybe just fold forward a little more. Maybe if you have a bolster or pillow under you, maybe take this opportunity to just move it off to the side and see if you can go a little bit deeper without it. Or maybe you're just perfect where you are. Only you know. Wherever you are, three more deep breaths. Once you have completed your three breaths, gently and slowly begin to walk yourself back up. Good. And we're gonna do that entire sequence on the other side. So here, left foot comes into right thigh, readjust the sit bones. Inhale, breathe deeply. And exhale, begin to twist over that extended leg. Now if you used a bolster on the other side, you might wanna bring it around just in case. But be curious about the body because usually one side is not the same as the other. And again, it's just about the noticing. Just noticing. Find length in the spine. On the breath in and on the breath out, we're gonna to begin to fold over that extended leg. Heel presses away from you, toes move toward you. 
And just like the wide leg forward fold we just did, if the leg wants to be soft, just let it be soft. But if you want to engage more into the connective tissue of the leg, then you're also going to press the heel away from your toes toward you. And then don't forget about that bent knee leg. Press down through that leg as well. So there's equal weight on both the extended leg and the bent knee. And then again, if you'd like to place a bolster, a blanket, or a pillow on top of that extended right leg, you're going to put that on there now and then fold over it to whatever degree is best for you. Like maybe this is your forward fold today and that's just fine. Rest the head in the hands. Maybe go a little bit deeper, drawing the chin in toward the chest, resting the forehead on the bolster. Or maybe you remove that bolster completely and you just use the hands underneath the calves or reach for behind the knee or the foot. And just come back to that intentional breath. Another thing here is to just notice the height of the shoulders. So is one shoulder lifted up really high and the others dropped low? See if you can find uh, the shoulders being parallel to the floor. Just about another 30 seconds here, so feel free to deepen the posture in this last little bit of time here, if you like, by removing your prop or just seeing if the body is open to finding a little bit more space. And then slowly walking yourself back up, taking your time because that low back or side body might be having a little chat with you right now. It's probably just saying thank you, but it might not feel that way at first. Remember the difference between feeling a really nice opening in the body that might feel uncomfortable and feeling pain. The second one, the pain part is not what we're looking for. We're gonna draw that left knee up toward the ceiling. And remember that foot can stay on the inside of the thigh or you can hop that foot to the outside. And then you're gonna to have to readjust the sit bones most likely. Okay. And then if you have anything going on in the shoulders, just hold on to um, the leg, the left leg with the right arm or inhale to raise up through that right arm to find a little bit more extension in the in the spine and then wrap that right arm around the leg and we'll take the left hand and draw it behind us again in that tent like or spider like shape just so that we're not collapsing back onto the hand but we're using it to remind us to lift up that extended leg is strong unless you choose otherwise inhale breathe deeply and exhale to begin to draw that low belly back toward the spine and begin to find the twist first through that low belly. And then inhale, find nice length in the spine and exhale, begin to twist through the chest, through the thoracic spine. And then lastly, on the exhale, twist from the shoulders and maybe the gaze looks over the shoulders for a few breaths. Now after a few breaths there, we're gonna keep the chin and nose parallel to the floor and just draw the gaze back over toward the center and then over toward that extended leg. 
Breathe in deeply. So we're still keeping the torso in that twist and then we're beginning to drop the chin down toward the chest. And then again, if that back arm starts to get a little tingly or that bringing the head back over changes if it feels yummy or not, just draw that hand up over toward the side a little bit. And then find your breath once more. The breath is really what is going to help us open, okay? The more you breathe, the more oxygen gets transferred into your, into your blood and into your muscles and into your, into your connective tissue. And, and the breath really helps us just find space in the body. If you're going to focus on just one thing, let it be the breath. My belly is rumbling. I don't know if you can hear that. I hope you can hear the beautiful birds that are outside right now. Good. And then we're going to slowly bring the gaze back up and then draw back to center. Nice and slow, begin to release that leg back down and draw the leg nice and open, nice and wide. Adjust the sit bones once more. You might have to pull the flesh out from underneath your seat. And then again, bring your bolster here if it feels good and if you like that extra support. Otherwise, just go ahead and begin to fold forward. You get to decide, choose your adventure if your legs are engaged or not, if the feet are soft or if the feet are engaged engaging the connective tissue of the legs as well i like to move into the forward fold on the breath out so inhaling to find length in the spine and then exhaling to fold over on the exhale and let that upper back round let the chin drop down toward the chest and just find a really nice extension here And we're only going to be here for about one minute on this, on this time. And then we're going to change the forward fold a little bit. Notice if your face is scowling or if you have a nice smile on your face. Now we're going to slowly begin to walk ourselves back up. We're going to take another forward fold, but we're going to change this a little bit. We're going to draw the feet together and let the knees come wide into Baddha Konasana, okay. or bound angle. And from here, so the feet, foot soles draw together, and then they gently begin to open up toward the ceiling. And maybe you're like, uh-uh, that ain't happening for my feet. And that's fine, but take the thumbs and begin to start to roll open the arches of the feet just to begin to explore it if it's not happening for you today. The more that we start to open up the feet like a book toward the ceiling, the more that those inner upper thighs start to open and release as well. And then we're drawing those heels back toward our pelvis as close as they can go. And at first, we're holding onto the feet and we're going to draw the heart forward and the shoulder blades back. Okay, and we're going to stay here for just a little bit. Okay, so can you bring the heart forward, shoulder blades back, and then also drop the chin? Can you do all of that and bring the ocean breath back into the practice? 
And can you do all of that and still find some space in between each breath in and each breath out? I figure if I give you five things to focus on, maybe you'll be able to at least focus on a couple of them. These are all tools to help draw the mind back into the body and back into the heart. See how badly you need a pedicure. What a great self-care gift to give yourself on a weekend. I know what I'm doing after this. Right. And then now we're going to change the shape of the spine and we're going to begin to roll the shoulders forward. Draw the spine back toward the wall behind you and we're going to start to turn this into a forward fold. Now you can simply forward fold over those feet. You can have your bolster or your pillow in front of you so that you can fold over. Maybe folding over just looks like this for you. If you want to go deeper yet, I'm going to change this into a modified tortoise posture. So the feet can move slightly ahead of where they are. I'm going to gently lift up through the shins, sliding the hands underneath the low lower leg and then wrapping them around the feet and then dropping the head down toward the ground. So ideally, the top of the head rests in that little nook that you've made with the feet. And maybe you're laughing and thinking that I'm so far away from that right now and that it's just perfect and fine. We're all at different places in our practice. Some days I can do this and some days I can't. So this is a, definitely an advancement into the posture. So just be cool with yourself wherever you are. And we are going to hold for two more minutes. So return back to the ocean breath. Slowly begin to roll back up one hand and then the other. Bring the knees together. We're going to make our way onto our back. Before we enter into our Shavasana, just roll on down, draw the knees up into the chest. And then keep the right knee tucked into the chest and either place the left foot on the ground or straighten the left leg out long. Okay. Draw the right arm out beside you, holding on to the right knee with the left hand. And as you breathe out, we're going to start to twist over toward the left. Twisting only to a place that feels safe for that right extended shoulder and arm. And then the gaze looks back toward that extended arm or up toward the sky or perhaps over toward that twisted knee.
Find the breath again. Gently begin to draw yourself back to center. Draw both knees into the chest. Make yourself small, bring your forehead up toward your knees. Hold on to whatever you can, your legs or your feet. And then gently begin to roll back down. This time keeping the left knee tucked in, that right foot either rests on the floor and you'll twist over with that right knee bent or extend that right leg long along the floor, find your breath, bring the left hand away from the shoulder, flip the palm up toward the ceiling and go into the twist on the exhale. Again, the head or gaze is wherever it is best for you. And by best, I don't mean just most comfortable, I mean, what is giving you the most opening? Maybe you can hear my cat looking for her lunch. <laughs> uh, roll back over to center. Draw the knees back up into the chest. I closed the door so that they wouldn't steal the show because they would for sure come and steal the show. But they always stay quite close. Take one more big hug, draw the hands up toward the feet, the legs, whatever's here for you. And lengthen the spine. Good. And then draw the feet back down. I'm going to take one more posture before we finish. Place the feet on the floor and lift up the seat and draw the seat over toward the right hand side of the mat. And then you're gonna walk the feet over toward the left side of the mat. If you know banana asana, this is what we're going into. You can draw the right foot over top of the left or perhaps for you it's the left foot over top of the right. You get to decide. And then using safe movement. We're just going to draw our forearms or upper arms, sorry, into the mat just to draw our upper body also over toward the left side of the mat. So you're in the shape of a banana or a crescent on the mat with the upper and lower parts of the body over toward the left and the seat and the hips over toward the right. Now drop down through that right hip. So drop that right glute back down to the floor. You can either just rest with the hands on the belly or you can draw the arms up overhead, okay? And then just like we did in that warm up posture where we held onto the wrist with the, with the hand, we can hold on to the right wrist with the left hand if that feels good here. Another option is to interlace the fingers and place the head into the cradle that the hands will make. So you get to decide. We're going to be here for about two minutes on each side.
If you feel that right glute starts to lift, draw it back down toward the mat. This posture really works those side meridian lines or those side energy lines in the body. All the way down from the ankles, all the way up through the hips, side body and the arms. few more deep breaths here. And we're going to unwind really slowly, just like that other seated twist that we did. This can really wake up parts of the low back and side body. And the waking up can sometimes feel like a bit of a shock. So Take your time. Between sides, give yourself a nice big hug. So make yourself really small once more. And then lengthen back along the mat. First, bringing the feet, so the foot soles down to the mat and then drawing that left seat, the, the seat over toward the left side, sorry. And then walking those legs over toward the right side of your mat. And again, crossing the left ankle over the right, or maybe it's the right ankle over the left for you. And then you're just going to wiggle that upper body over toward the right side of the mat as well. And then drop down through that left glute. And then the arms just rest on the belly if you like or you can draw those arms up and over the body so you're in a full crescent shape. This time holding on to the left wrist with the right hand. And or interlacing the fingers and drawing them underneath the head to make a cradle for the head. And again, we're just here for two minutes, so Connect back with that ocean breath. And as you're here, I'm just gonna chat for a second about why is this opening of the different lines, meridian lines in the body, why is the opening of the connective tissue finding space in it. Why is that so important? Well, research is really starting to give us insight into the function and the purpose of the connective tissue in the body, and it's actually quite brilliant. They used to not think that it did very much, but they're starting to understand that the connective tissue is a huge part of sending electrical signals through the body. Now, those in traditional Chinese medicine have understood this for a long, long time. And they use these pathways in the connective tissue of the body to help send signals in the nervous system to help restore balance in the body, the way that the body functions. And so spending time in these long opening yin postures is just another way to create space for the energy to communicate and move in the whole body so there you go we're going to start to walk back nice and slow again and then take one last Time to make yourself as small as you like. Maybe you'd like to take a happy baby, which is the knees opening out to the side, opening up the feet nice and wide and drawing those knees down into towards the floor. Maybe there's another posture you'd like to take. Maybe you'd just like to bring the legs up toward the sky and find some nice rotation in the ankles or maybe your body's wanting you to do something totally different for your last posture take a moment to just ask the body what it needs and then when you're ready you can stretch out for shavasana now if the low back is talking to you you might want to slip a bolster underneath those knees 
Just let the feet fall away, flop open. Allow the hands to come down by the hips. Allow yourself to maybe support the head and neck with a little bit of a blanket. Palms face the ceiling. And just totally let go. Let go of the ocean breath. Let go of holding on to anything in the body. In fact, we'll deepen this letting go by tightening and tensing every part of the body, all the way from the toes to the top of the head, the face, the internal organs. Breathe in deeply. Squeeze as tight as possible and exhale to release. You can really feel the difference between effort and surrender. One more time. Squeeze everything in the body. This is also a great way to practice some um, lymphatic flushing. Tighten, tighten, tighten. And then exhale. Soften every bit of yourself. Relax the top of the head. Soften the forehead. Let the eyes soften the jaw. The whole face. Let the shoulders melt down toward the floor. Let the arms soften. Send the breath down the arms, out the fingertips. Feel the whole back body supported by the floor. Allow the whole torso to just let go. All the organs, soften the belly. Relax the glutes. Let the breath move down the legs, out the feet and toes. Let the whole body be supported by the ground on the breath out. And lastly, just bring your attention back to your heart. With the next few exhales, imagine, visualize your heart softening, your heart opening. Feel free to stay here for as long as you like. Otherwise, we'll begin to make our way up to a seated posture. But no rush. You can hang on and just move right into a meditation if you'd like from here. If you are choosing to end the practice at this time, reach up. Breathe out, bring the hands down toward the heart. Give yourself great gratitude for the gift of time that you took to be with yourself in this gift of your yoga practice. Thank you so much for practicing with me. Namaste. The light in me sees and honors the light in you. Hope to see you next time. Have a beautiful day.